Hello and welcome to the Women's Health Theme. Today we're going to be talking about antenatal care. So to start off with, we're going to be asking you a few questions to assess your already existing knowledge. So question number one, by what weeks gestation should the booking appointment be? Is it A, eight weeks, B, 14 weeks, C, 10 weeks, or D, 12 weeks? So the booking appointment is a first contact with a midwife or a pregnant mum. And the answer is C, 10 weeks. The booking appointment should ideally have taken place by 10 weeks, but many women have this between the eight and 12 week period. Question two, how many antenatal care appointments should a nulliparous, uncomplicated woman have? So A7, B10, C12, or D8? So nulliparous means first pregnancy. And the answer is 10. If it's more complicated, um, then more antenatal care appointments should be scheduled. And question three, at what week does the measurement of the fundal height begin? Is it A, 16 weeks, B, 30 weeks, C, 20 weeks, or D, 25 weeks? So the fundal height measurement allows a growth of the bump to be plotted so they can measure baby's growth. The answer is D, 25 weeks. This allows pregnancy to be mapped out to ensure that the baby is growing as it should be. Okay, so today we're going to discuss what is antenatal care, what is the booking appointment, um, look at each week's appointment with the antenatal care team and what happens in each week, um, and then 34 weeks and beyond is when it gets a little bit more complicated because obviously the baby is nearly due. And then we have some questions to finish off. Okay, so what is antenatal care? So antenatal care is given to every pregnant woman by midwives and on occasion obstetricians. The needs of each pregnant woman should be reassessed at each appointment throughout the entire pregnancy. So how many appointments does a woman have? So nulliparous women have 10 appointments. Multiparous women have seven appointments. And if the pregnancy is complicated, so there's pre-existing medical conditions like hypertension, cardiac disease, um, if they're over 40, if they have a high BMI, if they've had a previous C-section or preeclampsia, eclampsia on any miscarriages, then they may have more appointments, especially with an obstetrician who look after specialist high-risk pregnancies. So when a woman realises she's pregnant, she should reach out to the midwife or the GP and they provide the antenatal care. Okay, so the booking appointment, which as said, should take place around 10 weeks, but generally happens between 8 and 12 weeks, um, is many women's first contact with a healthcare professional. So you need to give information about folic advice supplementation, lifestyle advice, so including smoking cessation, alcohol consumption, drug use, um, how to prepare foods, which foods to avoid so they don't. Um, increase the risk of catching any infections so like no um, hard cheeses no eggs no poultry that's uncooked etc antenatal screening advice so um, screening for down syndrome and um, talk about maybe where the birth happens but that's a little bit further on as well discussed again and how a baby develops during pregnancy it's important to identify women who need extra care and plan their care for their pregnancy and um, so you need to check the blood group and their rhesus d status and you need to offer screening for anemia, hep B, HIV, rubella, syphilis, asymptomatic bacteria and Down syndrome because these all can affect pregnancy and the unborn child. Um, and you also offer chlamydia screening to women under 25. And you also need to calculate the BMI, measure the blood pressure and test the urine. So you're testing the urine for proteinuria, which is a sign of preeclampsia and glucose, so gestational diabetes. It's also important to identify any history of mental health or and ask about mood um, disorders and um, so specifically depression because although mental health is discussed a lot after um, the baby's been born you can get it during pregnancy as well. So what happens after a booking appointment? So if there's screening tests then they will be arranged and um, so blood tests for all of these things and um, urine test, ultrasound scan to determine gestational age so Traditionally, crown rump measurement is done, um, and that will give you an estimated due date. And Down syndrome screening using the combined test, which is a blood sample and a scan to, determ to determine the nuchal translucency. Um, so the information from these tests and the age of the woman is used to determine the chance of the baby having Downs, Edwards or Patel syndromes. And you can also do serum screening when the nuchal translucency test isn't available. Um, and an ultrasound scan, the ultrasound anatomy scan for structural abnormalities between 18 weeks and 20 weeks. 
Okay, so the 16 week appointment moving on a little bit in the pregnancy. So we need to discuss any results of the screening tests and um, investigate if there's um, a hemoglobin level and consider iron supplementation because we don't want women to be anemic in pregnancy because they already have um, an increased circulatory pressure. We want to measure their blood pressure and test for their urine for proteinuria, again to screen for preeclampsia. We need to give information about the routine anatomy scan and um, offer hand offer verbal hand uh, verb, sorry offer verbal information and then back it up with antenatal classes that are on offer. And between 18 and 20 weeks, there is an ultrasound scan, the anatomy scan. And if the placenta is found to extend across the internal cervical os at the time of the scan, another scan is offered at 32 weeks um, because we don't want to have any undiagnosed placenta previa that can prevent delivery and lead to stillbirth of babies. Okay, so moving on a little bit later now in pregnancy, it's so a 25 and 28 weeks appointment. The 25 week appointment is offered to all newly parents women and it is impo important to plot and measure the synthesis, so that's where the fundal height measurement starts. Um, offer support opportunity for women to ask any questions about anything, ask about antenatal classes, and then the 28 week appointment is offered to all women. So 25 weeks is just women in the first pregnancy, 28 weeks is every woman that's pregnant. So you have another screening for anemia, offer iron supplementation. You offer anti prophylaxis to rhesus negative women. You measure their fundal height, blood pressure and urine and this is like what you do now at every antenatal appointment. You measure fundal height, blood pressure and urine to screen the abnormal growth of the baby, any preeclampsia or gestational diabetes. Um, encourage voices, encourage concerns to be voiced, sorry. And low paris women are offered an appointment at um, 31 weeks to measure their blood pressure, urine and fundal height again. Moving on now to the later end of pregnancy. So from here, all pregnant women are seen every two weeks. So at 34 weeks, um, you start talking about labour, birth, create a birthing plan, discuss if a woman would like a vaginal delivery, a C-section, um, water birth, anything that can, a home birth even, anything that can accommodate them and that they want for their delivery. Because after all, it's a really incredibly special moment for both mother and baby and obviously the rest of the family. So you need to discuss what happens in active labour and you need to give a second dose of anti-D to rhesus negative women. Then you also need to measure blood pressure, urine and fundal height. Discuss any screening tests that occurred at 28 weeks um, if you've not done so before. And then at 36 weeks you need to give information regarding breastfeeding, how to look after the new baby because for many women, especially newly parents women, being pregnant is exciting but the thought of having a baby and someone to look after is can be quite daunting can be quite scary so midwives need to give information on how to actually look after the new baby vitamin k prophylaxis newborn screen tests and postnatal self-care again to prevent um postnatal depression as much as possible measure blood pressure urine for the high as always and check the position of the baby um because obviously different positions means that it struggles with different delivery. So if breach off of the um, external cephalic version where they move the baby into the right position. So 38 weeks and beyond. From 37 weeks, women are classed as full term. So although these appointments are booked in with the midwives, they may not attend because they might have gone to labour, etc. So at these appointments, blood pressure and urine are measured. Um, late onset preeclampsia is big really screened for. You need to measure the fundal height and if given information about prolonged pregnancy because if they've met 38 weeks and not given birth then it is the risk that they will go over for 40 weeks. And then from 41 weeks, their memory sweep is offered, induction of labour is offered and fundal height, blood pressure and urine is measured for the final time. So that was a whirlwind stop of antenatal care in the NHS. Um, according to NICE guidelines, so everything I've just discussed is as per NICE guidelines. So in summary, some few questions now to ask about what you've learned. So question one, what is the combined test commonly used to screen for? Is it A, fetal macrosomia, B, Down syndrome, C, rhesus status, or D, anemia? It's offered between 10 and 14 weeks, if you remember. And the answer is 
B, Down syndromes, offered a serial blood test and a scan to measure nuchal translucency. Question two. What is a nuchal translucency test? Is it A, a blood test? B, a measurement of amniotic fluid level? C, a measurement of the fluid behind baby's neck? Or D, amniotic fluid sample taken? So I don't think I touched on this, so it's quite good that this question has come up. So following on from the previous question as well. So nuchal translucency test is a measurement of the fluid behind baby's neck, um, part of a combined screening test for Down syndrome. And finally, question three. When is anti-D prophylaxis given? Is it A, 34 and 36 weeks, B, 24 and 28 weeks, C, 28 and 36 weeks, or D, 28 and 34 weeks? So it's prevent rhesus disease, which I think is covered in another video on the website. And the answer is D, 28 to 34 weeks to prevent rhesus disease, as discussed. Okay, well, thank you for listening today. We've covered all aspects of antenatal care um, as per NICE guidelines. Thank you for listening.